Hi, this is Gavin from Just Digital Media. In this screencast, I'll be giving you a quick introduction to the screencast production workflow, which you can use as part of your checklist when planning any type of screencasting project. The five key stages of the screencasting workflow are similar to those for the production of other types of digital media and digital learning objects, and they are planning, pre-production, production, post-production, post and use and reuse. Planning involves both the design of your screencast, including scripting, sourcing of images and other content, and also planning what resources you will need to access during production and delivery. Good screencast design is focused on a set of learning goals, which should inform your plans for the content, length and format of your screencast. Target length in particular can be an important decision, which can add useful structural constraints. The resources you will need can include people, collaborators and technical assistance, equipment, access to a suitable workspace and the skills needed to capture and prepare your materials for delivery. Planning is an absolutely vital stage of the workflow and many of your most important decisions will be made before you press record for the first time. Once planning is complete, you can start to prepare your workspace, workstation and materials to ensure a successful and stress-free recording session. This is the pre-production stage of the workflow, where you ensure everything you need is to hand and that you have configured and, where necessary, tested your input devices to your liking. Once you press the record button, you are in production. While this is the stage where you actually create much of your content, you may find, if you have planned and prepared successfully, that it can be quite a quick process. The main things to bear in mind are external factors which can affect your recording, like background noise and interruptions, and aiming to minimise or avoid them. Different techniques for recording are often a matter of personal style and preference, but a good rule is to concentrate on a relaxed and natural performance, record everything, and save decisions about which version or take to use until afterwards. If you plan to edit or enhance your screencast, then the next stage, post-production, is where you will do it. Post-production can be as simple as pressing the export button and choosing an output format, or it can involve complex editing, processing, audio adjustments, branding, titles and many other processes before exporting it in multiple or custom formats. And all this requires specialist skills and can be very, very time consuming. Of course, the intention of all of these post-production processes is to enhance the usability and quality of your screencast, but be realistic about the needs and expectations of your audience, and the time and skills necessary to achieve results. The final stage of the screencast lifecycle is use and reuse, including delivery. Delivery is usually via the internet on either a publicly hosted video provider or an institutional VLE. A finished screencast is essentially a digital video file and can be tagged, managed, delivered and archived in similar ways. So that's a brief overview of the A to Z of the screencast workflow. All of these areas are explored in far more depth on our website, justdigitalmedia.ac.uk, in both a range of advice documents and further screencasts, suitable for all levels of experience. We offer advice on specific projects or issues which you may have via our help desk, so email us at info at justdigitalmedia.ac.uk.